let's let's talk a little bit now about this menopausal transition. Um, again, it's 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 right up there with death and taxes in terms of inevitability. Um, mm -hmm. It's an area that I have become intensely interested in um, because I view it as you know one of the great tragedies of the past twenty five years is. is you know, this very popular study done the Women's Health Initiative, which was done, uh, p published in the early part of the, uh, of this century and, and really came to, in my view, a very erroneous conclusion, which basically scared an entire generation of physicians and women away from HRT. Uh, and, and as a result of that, not only has there been an unnecessary abundance of symptoms associated with menopause, but I, but I think the real hidden tragedy has been the larger epidemic of, of osteopenia and osteoporosis in a, in a group of women who may have otherwise received estrogen as they, as they went through menopause. Um, so I know that your area of interest is not, or area of expertise is not, you know, in the hormone side as abundantly as it is on the training side, but is there, is there anything on the hormone side that, that you want to talk about beyond what we've already discussed, which is the important physiology, the important role estrogen plays specifically in managing the role of osteoclasts in bone remodeling. And, 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 you know, I assume that most of the women and men, presumably the women, of course, for the purpose of this discussion that are coming into this clinic, are they mostly postmenopausal? Yeah, the majority would be post, but we got, you know, we, we have thousands of people on the books. Uh, and so that, that number, you know, is the, of people who are not postmenopausal is, is still substantial. Um, so I think the, the years, uh, that we've been open and we've been open almost exactly nine years now, hmm. um, the, an awareness has grown in the, in the community about us, uh, people who are not postmenopausal but are aware that either they have low bone mass already or that mum or dad or, or granny or grandpa had low bone mass, they want to prevent it. So it, it's one of the happiest things that has happened that people are realising that premenopause is the time to start uh, taking care of this issue. So we do have a proportion, but of course, most people don't have any idea what their bone health is like until they either have a first fracture or they go through menopause and they have a savvy enough GP who says, we need to get your baseline DEXA. Let's get you started. And all of a sudden, yikes, I have either osteopenia or osteoporosis. Away you go to the bone clinic. And and you you said something very important there, which you and I take for granted. It's I think it's very important to reiterate for the for the listeners, for the female listeners in particular, um, which is you don't want to wait until you're into menopause to replace estrogen. You have to do it during the pre and perimenopausal stage to get the maximum effect. And again, this is something that I think um, not enough women are being educated on. And as such, even if they know, oh yeah, I've kind of heard that estrogen matters and this might be a reason for me to consider HRT as part of my decision matrix, you know, they might think, well, let me go through this two miserable years of perimenopause, wait till I'm completely amenorrheic, my estradiol levels are unmeasurable and my FSH is through the roof and now we should start doing it. No, it turns out that there are data that suggest that they've actually lost quite a bit of bone up until that point, um, which again, to me is, it's it's so preventable. Uh, so I just, I hope that women listening to this are, are, are sitting with doctors who, who can, can help them through that transition.